Day 55 of the Battle of Portland. And we're seeing the same thing we've seen over and over and over again. Far leftists marching through the streets, acting like they're fighting some valiant war against the feds. But the reality is the feds are just holding the line. If the federal police wanted to get rid of them, they would do it in two seconds. But listen, after 55 days of this, there's only so much I can tell you. But we do, we do have big developments. And I decided, well, I could tell you about, say, 12 more jurisdictions that are rejecting federal authority. And we'll talk about it. Or a corpse found in the burned wreckage of a pawn shop after the violent rioters in Minneapolis burned down a pawn shop. Turns out somebody was inside it and they killed this person. I'm going to start with this particular story because it exemplifies the stupidity of many of these people who are involved in this stupid game of cops and robbers. And I'm going to call it a stupid game. Now to the feds, it's not a game. But to a lot of these far leftists, they're playing a game and it's overtly political. While it's fine to say that maybe there, re- there are real political ramifications for what the left is doing, many of these people who are showing up with umbrellas up against guys who have live ammo, clearly they don't actually think they're in danger. They do not actually think they will be physically hurt. They are playing a game. But here's the problem. None of them want to admit it. Andy No tweeted this. Antifa black block militant beats up Black Lives Matter supporting photographer Mason Lake photo. Mason Lake was accused of communicating with Portland police and a bounty has been put on him on social media by Antifa and the Portland riots. Someone responded to Andy saying, do you have sources for this alleged bounty? I'd like to see that as well. I, look, I think Andy does a, a fairly decent job. I don't think he gets it right every single time. Nobody does. But he tweeted it out. Is it true? I don't know. Well, what did the journalist who was actually attacked say? This journalist says, someone really doesn't want me there filming. I got to write a letter to Team Wendy about their helmets worth every penny. I took probably eight to 10 punches to the head. I stayed out for two assaults by the Fed still and got footage of their attacks on protesters. Many media persons were attacked tonight. I learned a fellow journalist took a less lethal round to the head. The Feds are taking us journalists out one by one with any means at their disposal. Arrests, beatings, attempted murder, framing, intimidating. These are all fascists, dictatorship tactics. Why are they trying to eliminate the media? What do they have to hide? Is it war crimes? Pure and, uh, it is war crimes, pure and simple. They are trying to hide their war crimes against Portland citizens by censoring the press. Ladies and gentlemen, the most extravagant, performative games of cops and robbers. Mason, truly a wonderful performance war crimes. You commented on a video of the Antifa people beating you up. Now here's the best part. Although he tweeted this, the feds are trying to shut me down. What did he actually do? <laughs> he retweeted Andy No. So uh, I'm confused by this. Mason Lake photo retweeted Andy No saying that they put a bounty on him. Then later he comes out and tries claiming the feds are trying to cover up war crimes. I tell you what, man, these kids they don't realize that they're not they're not playing uh, a game. I mean, they think they are. But eventually, you know, you you mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's that's really what it is. They're there's they're they're one of these dumb people who thinks they're going to go on the you know, the running of the bulls or whatever and they're like, "Hee hee, oh, there's bulls, they're going to get me." And then all of a sudden they get gored and they're like, "Oh, help, I'm being gored." Yeah. You see, these officers for now have kept a tempered blade is that the right word? They've, they've, they've not actually come out swinging. They've been very defensive. They've been very calm. You can call it whatever you want, war crimes, secret police, but they're seemingly doing the bare minimum to try and stop, uh, put fires out for the most part and push people back. If they really wanted to like rendition you, you can thank Obama for their legal ability to do so. Which brings me now I'm just going to, you know what, before I get to the, to the severity of this, I want to show you this. This really exemplifies my point. Griffin, who apparently is on the ground, I suppose, tweeted, this one's titled Portland protesters winning shields, leaf blowers, drums, umbrellas, the most confidence I've seen. The feds retreat and protesters push forward, pelting them as they go inside the doors. They have no fear, no fear. Yeah. You know why they have no fear? Because the feds aren't actually trying to hurt you. Let me give you the real title, friends. I said the actual title is feds are not actually trying to hurt people. Heaven help you if they were. You know why? They could fire way more beanbags if they so desired. 
they could fire live ammunition if they so desired. Now, of course, like I said, there's political ramifications to doing so. So they're taking the slow roll approach. They are holding the line and that's about it. Every so often we see videos of the feds coming out. They might grab or arrest someone. They might clear out the area and then they go back to the courthouse. That's about it. Of course, if you're reading the New York Times, you'll hear that they're like secret police renditioning people and like snatching random people off the street. There were like two videos of this. And all of a sudden it's like this crazy story. I love it. The memes, the memes are glorious. They just banned on Twitter QAnon. And I, I really got to say, you know, Twitter is loving allowing the far left to just vomit in each other's ears. There are someone sent me like 50 tweets of all of these different people claiming that Blackwater is on scene, that it's the it's the paramilitary of the feds to coming to rendition us. It's, it's like, dude, these kids live in a fictitious reality. First of all, I'm pretty sure it's not even called Blackwater anymore. But these guys, they're saying are unidentified secret police literally have badges and literally have their their badge numbers on their arms. There's one photo going around where a news article says unidentified police and they show a photo of a guy with his name (laughs) and CBP and his badge number on his arm. But they want to pretend they want to act like it's some crazy secret you know, we're fighting. We're, we are la resistance fighting against the evil fascist dictators. Rah. OK, dude, you, 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 you guys, we're not playing games here. I bring you now back to Minneapolis. Police find body in building burned down during George Floyd protests. Dear God, this is what nightmares are made of. The body was found at the site of a Minneapolis pawn shop that was set on fire just days after the death of Mr. Floyd. This body's been in there for nearly two months. I wonder if anyone was asking where their friend, their father, their brother, their sister, I don't know you know, who this person was. Were there people saying, help find this missing person? They've been missing since the riots. Killed by the, by the rioters, literally killed by the rioters. They think they're playing games when they start fires. Let me tell you, when you see these federal officers come out and start clearing people away. You want to know why they're doing it? It's because of stories like this. But these, these, these dumb people who are engaging in this nonsensical assault on a federal fortress, let's be real, it's a gigantic concrete and steel building, they think that they're playing a game. It's fun. The protesters are winning. Yeah, Trump could, could invoke the Insurrection Act and send in the National Guard, the army, to just control the streets. Done. Nothing, you know, it's the end of it. But he's not. Because... We don't live in a fascist dictatorship. It's not war crimes. It's literally just some riot control. Calm down. But I'll tell you why they're engaging in riot control. And it's, this, it's stories just like this. You see, these dumb kids don't understand how the world works. So when the riots break out in Minneapolis, people start starting fires and they're all laughing, going like, hee hee, yay, a fire. And then you burn down a building and you're like, wow, look at the, burn, the burning building. And then two months later, oh, There was a person in that building. Yeah. So when they try starting fires outside of the federal courthouse, it is no surprise then that DHS, CBP, they come out and they start firing rubber bullets and tear gas. I don't know if they're actually firing rubber bullets. It might be beanbags, but perhaps rubber bullets. But tear gas for sure. I believe it's been reported rubber bullets. And they they act like, "Oh, oh, help, help, I'm being repressed. I've seen so many people posting online saying, like, I don't understand. Why do the feds keep coming out of the building? That's because you're not getting real news. I think it's funny. Somebody posted one of the videos from me from the other day, and I see all these lefties commenting, saying that I'm, like, making things up or something like that. And I'm like, I'm just reading you what the journalists are saying. I'm giving you my opinion on it. Perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps, you know, everything's exaggerated across the board. But I have seen videos of them trying to start fires, bash the windows in. And it's been reported by sympathetic journalists that they've breached the doors before. What, do you, what, what about this from the New York Times? Am I making this up? Is this something that should be ignored? Should we pretend like this person's life didn't matter? Should we pretend like it's all just a protest when they burned down a building and killed the person inside? Should we pretend like what's going on in Portland is a protest when they're trying to set fire to the wooden barricades around the building and there are people inside the building? Should we pre- pretend? No. We call it like it is a bunch of stupid young people and not necessarily young, but it's a group of very large 
a very large group of dumb people, including moms, dads, regular people, whatever you want to call it, far leftists, insurrectionists, insurgency, whatever. That was one of the things they got mad about. Because I, I call that, I, I put far left insurgents breach the courthouse. What am I supposed to say? It's not a riot. A riot, tip, like, look, a riot is when the, the, the White Sox win the World Series. And then in Chicago, they flip cars over. That's a riot. It's, it's, it's random, meaningless, nonsensical. The riot control come in, shut it all down. A riot is when people run around smashing windows. A riot is not when a group of politically active individuals whose goal is the overthrow of the government breach a federal courthouse and try and shut down uh, and try and target federal agents. That is not a riot. OK, we're talking about something totally different. So you know what? I guess I'm going to have to say insurgents or something. But I'll tell you what we're playing for keeps. It's it, it, I think these kids are definitely they, they don't realize the severity of what they're doing. They're useful idiots and they're having fun. I assure you, the moment a couple live bullets fly from any side, you're going to see a lot of these people just flee. They'll never come back. The moms, the regular people, they're only out there because tear gas is not a big deal. Seriously, even some of the reporters are saying that a lot of these activists are no, no longer fear the tear gas. Try the tear gas in Egypt, Turkey or Brazil. Let's talk about tear gas. Wow, man. I've been tear gassed several times. The tear gas they've used in the United States is, in my opinion, laughable. You, you close your eyes, you hold your breath, and you walk through it. You're fine. You don't need a gas mask. Now, in Turkey, whew, oh boy, in Brazil, in Brazil getting tear gassed, that's what nightmares were made of. Wow, they used some crazy stuff. I had just mucus pouring out of every, every hole on my face. It was, I, I had no choice but to retreat. That was intense. Portland, they're barely, it's, it's like the most pathetic tear. It's, it's, it's like, it, it's CS smoke. It's an irritant and you're like, oh man, I'm coughing. Oh heavens, what do I do? Look, man, you can't, you can't start a fire around one of these buildings. The feds are allowed to do what they do. Uh, you know, obviously there's constraints legally. But when Donald Trump says we're going to protect federal courthouses and they're trying to burn it down, I need you to look at stories like this from the New York Times. They say acting on an, an anonymous tip, the authorities in Minneapolis this week discovered the body of a man inside a building that was burned down during protests. You see the game they play, New York Times? A, a person was burned alive inside a building by violent riots. And they say, protests, protests. The body was found Monday as the authorities searched through debris at the site of the pawn shop at 2726 East Lake Street, in Minneapolis three miles from the site of where the, uh, Floyd lost his life. On May 28th, three days after his death, the building was set on fire. In June, officials charged Montez Terriel Lee with arson after video footage surfaced of Mr. Lee pouring liquid from a metal container throughout the pawn shop. The death of the man whose body was found and whose name the authorities did not release is being investigated as a homicide. The Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office said Tuesday it had no information to release on the cause of death. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. I would love to pay for any one of these people to go to an actual war zone and to actually experience. I want, I want, I want to see these people look into the eyes of the person whose family member was killed. Go to the family member of, uh, of, of anybody who lost their life in, in these riots or internationally as they scream and bang on the wall. I want you to look them in the eyes and I want you to think, you know, and, and keep playing your stupid game. This one's called Portland protesters are winning. Marching forward with an umbrella against federal officers who are doing their job and not trying to uh, engage necessarily. They're just trying to keep, you know, people pushed back away from the courthouse is not winning anything. You are being permitted. That's what's happening. Well, I'll tell you what the escalation is. My friends, I tell you, man, things are getting spicy. More than a dozen mayors joined Portland in asking Trump administration to withdraw federal forces withdraw federal forces. Well, hold on a second. This is a dramatic escalation. Federal law enforcement is all over the country in various cities. And in Portland, the federal officers are just in their courthouse guarding their building. They're not patrolling streets. They're not occupying street corners. They didn't go downtown and remove the mayor and sit in their chair. None of that has happened. They say they're unidentified secret police, but they have badges. Not even kidding. There's a meme going around where people are like, 
what what is this? It's unidentified police, and it's a guy. His name is literally on his badge. It's a uh, Obriac. That's it, his. It's a public photo with his name on it and his badge number. They're lying about everything, and now they're trying to force federal law enforcement to leave their own jurisdiction in twelve different cities, more than a dozen. So more than twelve. You know where we're going. States are asserting their authority over the federal government. At least these cities are. We'll see how the states handle. But in Oregon, the attorney general is suing the federal government. This could potentially, I mean, look, I'm, again, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just speculating. But I'd imagine with the attorney general filing a lawsuit against the federal government based on the feds, you know, doing their thing. What happens if the AG loses? Clearly, it's the state going up against the feds. It's got to make its way to a federal court, potentially then the Supreme Court, maybe. What if the Supreme Court rules that based on the circumstances, in the event of local law enforcement standing down and violent riots sweeping the city, federal law enforcement does have the right to patrol streets and enforce local ordinance? What if that happens? Or at the very least, they, what happens if Oregon loses and they say, nope, DHS can do this? Well, there you go. It's going to assert an authority that didn't need to be. Right now, the feds are just protecting the courthouse. If the AG loses on this one, it could turn into something dramatically different. Because I really do not believe the feds will agree. A federal, you think a federal court's going to be like, state your case, attorney general. Well, we think federal law enforcement shouldn't be allowed to, to protect federal jurisdiction. The federal judge is going to be like, that's absurd. We have, we have jurisdiction in these buildings, and we're allowed to protect them. End of story. So what's the only thing that can really happen? An opinion that asserts the right to actually patrol the streets expands the authority of the DHS. I think that's the only way it can go. Either their powers remain where they are or it expands. Now, this is crazy. I'll tell you what. Look at this. They say a letter signed by mayors of Portland, Seattle, Atlanta, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Boston, Philadelphia, Denver, L.A., San Jose, Oakland, Tucson, Sacramento, Phoenix, Kansas City, and Missouri calls on the administration to withdraw federal forces from the cities where they are currently deployed and halt plans to send them elsewhere. Protesters, I love it, even after several people have died, and federal agents have clashed in Portland, well, okay, not in Portland, have, have clashed in Portland where protests have, have lasted more than 50 days. It's not a protest when you tear down the doors of a federal building and attack federal law enforcement. I'm sorry. It's not a protest when your stated goal is to attack law enforcement. That's something different. They said ahead of the 4th of July weekend, the Trump admin dispatched teams of federal agents to the city. The president said the effort was to protect federal property, but protesters say the action itself has fueled the public's outrage. Maybe it did. But what's, what, what, what are you, you going to do about it? I think it's fair to say that the deployment, uh, both of those statements are true. You see, you see what they tried doing, CNN, what CNN tries doing? They tried doing, the president said it was to protect federal property, but protesters say it fueled the outrage. Those are not related. They have nothing to do with each other. Both can be true. Sending in federal law enforcement to protect federal, federal jurisdiction outraged the, uh, the, the public. Done. But what do you want to do? Do you think that the feds are going to be like, by all means, burn down the building, destroy all the evidence and documentation and get all the criminals that we've arrested, free, you know, released? C corrupt all of their cases? No, they're going to be like, if for 39 nights, it was 30, that's how many nights it was, you besiege this building, we will eventually come out to enforce the law. So what happens now? When we're at a point where they're literally saying federal law enforcement must withdraw, you have no jurisdiction here, and they're suing over it. Man, like I mentioned this the other day, Tom Cotton said Fort Sumter, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the Union forces, the, the federal, you know, the, the North were in this fort and the South said, get out. The North won. So I, I'm not saying there's anything like that uh, in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. I can say it's getting interesting to see all these states assert their jurisdiction over the federal authorities when it comes to their own courthouses. Yeah, I mean, look, we've had we, we have FBI, we have DEA, we have federal law enforcement. They operate all throughout the country. New York, Chicago, L.A., the FBI has offices. How would it make sense if they said, we want the FBI to leave. You'd be like, no, the FBI has an office here and we're going to stay in the building. Now, I get it. We're talking about CBP. We're talking about the pact, right? I don't know. I don't. I forgot what the acronym means. But we're talking about a deployment of specific federal law enforcement 
And I, I believe they call it like the Elite Customs and Border Patrol Unit. A lot of these guys are former military. They're CBP, man. They typically deal with border stuff and now they're protecting federal facilities. Should Trump just allow federal facilities to go down, be destroyed, raided, ransacked? He can't. So maybe you can complain when the feds come with a bunch of APCs, occupy your street corners, and the entire city is locked down. Then you can say, hey, this is too much. But if you are not going to enforce the law against these people, don't be surprised when the feds do it. To see these people come out and straight up say, get out, this right here is a very dramatic escalation. But for those that are, that are, that are watching, I'll wrap it up with this. Why don't you do me a favor? Show them this New York Times story. Show them the story about a guy who was in a, who was in a pawn shop and the rioters, murderers, murderer, whatever, set it on fire. I want you to, to, to tell them, look at this pawn shop. Some guy burned it down. Turns out two months later, they found a dead body burned to death, burned alive. So what do you think we should do when these lunatics in Portland try burning the building down, trying to set the barricades on fire? I know it's a stone and steel structure on the outside, the facade, the concrete facade, it's concrete. But I'm pretty sure fire can spread very easily throughout these buildings. Buildings like this can burn. There's there's flammable materials. Should the feds do nothing? And if that building is destroyed, what does that mean? I believe that would bring us to a f- overt civil war. Now, some, I've had a lot of people say to me, civil war isn't the right word. We'll have the discussion. We'll carry it on. And they said the reason is that it's more of like a domestic insurgency or terror. It happens. It's happened before. It doesn't mean the state is threatened. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to let you finish. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. When the state is using its resources to protect the, the insurrectionists or whatever, meaning they're not prosecuting them, and the police are standing down, but they're suing the feds to force the feds to retreat. The state is on the side of of this insurgency. When you have a mayoral candidate saying that they are Antifa and Trump has declared Antifa a terror organization, you see where this is going. And that's the main point I made in every single video. The point is, if everything stops now, of course there was never a civil war. They'll say it was just, you know, rioting, ongoing rioting. It, it died down and that was the end of it. If it escalates, the historians will argue this is the middle. This is like the early stages, but it started a long time ago. I was, you know, reading like imagine if uh, imagine Fort Sumter at the start of the, the first American Civil War. Imagine they laid siege to uh, Fort Sumter for 34 hours of cannon fire. It's what happened. And then the Union lost control and then said, we're not going to pursue it anymore. There would have never been an American Civil War. No one would have talked about it. But because it escalated, they say that was the start. And that's the point I'm trying to make. It's very possible this all dies down and it's not extreme enough for anyone to really care about. And then we never, of course, there was never a civil war. It's also possible that in the next year, we have overt insurgency nationwide with 12 different, you know, 12 plus different cities saying they have the feds have to withdraw, have no, have no jurisdiction or whatever. And then with the escalation and violence between federal authorities and c- civilians in the various states, they say it is uh, a, an uprising or civil war. If the Democrats take a side, which they have, Nancy Pelosi has sided with the insurrectionist types. If the, the, the Democratic politicians in these states have already taken a side, we're seeing governmental level insurrection. Then they'll say with, with you know, the start of the George Floyd riots. So we're in it. This is it. If it ends now, we're good. If it keeps going, it started a long time ago. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Stick around, and I will see you all then.